Today we're going to bleed the clutch through on this right hand drive 110. This is the one advantage about having a right hand drive because the clutch is very, the master cylinder is very close to the slave. Um, and we've put OEM uh, TRW cylinders onto this. Uh, first thing you've got to do, I, I've just undone the bleed, uh, bleed screw to show you, it's 7 16th or 11 mil. Take the cap off <laughs> and then screw it back in. But only, you know, just do it finger tight because what we're going to do is use uh, gravity bleeding to bleed it through. It really is a quick job, a lot of people make a real mess of it, but it's really, really easy to do. So let's get set up. Well, I can't quite get my uh, camera stand in to show you right down at the bottom all the pieces. Obviously you've got your master cylinder here, there's no filter in it or anything like that, but um, the, the slave cylinder is down there. That's it, that's the one we've just taken the little cap off, I hope you can get it a bit better, where has it gone now? Wait a minute. Yeah, there it is. So there's the bleed screw. Now if I sort of zoom out, I know it's a bit cack handed but you'll have to put up with it. I've taken the air filter off and the hose that goes between the uh, wing air intake uh, just to get better access because you can just to say get your arm down one side. So what we're going to do now is fill up the cylinder. I've just to say nipped up that uh, uh, bleed nipple there. I'm going to fill it up and hopefully gravity will see us through. So I've got my uh, syringe here. This is easier to work with than pouring it off a bottle. I'm just going to pour a little bit into the master. And this saves spraying it all over the paintwork. work. There we go. So it took from here to here to fill up the master. What I'm going to do now is you just make sure that that is actually shut off and I'm going to go and get some more fluid. Now you won't be able to see much here because there's, there's precious little room. But I'm going to now, I've put a connect, uh, an oil collector on the floor and I'm just going to let it, let it drip through. And we should be able to see the level going down here. Now sometimes you have to give it a bit of an encouragement. But, uh, Oh, not in this case. <laughs> Don't let this drop down too far. Just keep topping it up. There's no need for pressure bleeds or anything like that. So you can see I've put a little bit more fluid in. Of course, all the pipes are empty. These uh, cylinders haven't got much of a capacity. That's the bad part about them. But like I say, you won't be able to see much because I'm down here. Darn! So you can't see all where the action is, but I'll, I'll pop. I'll pop the camera down. You'll be able to see it dripping out shortly. Now, a couple of things you've got to on the master cylinder, on the slave cylinder at the bottom, you've got to make sure that the bleed screw is at the top, not at the bottom. A lot of people make that mistake, thinking the fluid falls out. No, but you want the air to come out at the highest point. Now it's sort of stuck there, I wish I never stopped it now. Just give it a little bit of an encouraging pull. Not much. Is it going to come out? Is it going down? Yes it is. She's going down very fast, <laughs> as fast as I can push it in here. Oh, there she goes. Oh, 
I'm going to rearrange the camera so you can see what's going on. Right, so there's the bleed screw. Oh, it is it? There it is. Darn, why is this focusing on? Ah, damn it, it's hard to see. Right, let's try this again because I switched the camera off. So, can you see why I can't see myself? There. So grab hold of the bleed screw and you can see it's flooding out there in a torrent. See? Is that better? Maybe. Now put your hand underneath, screw it up and that's it. Now look, you see how much fluid I've got through just there so I didn't let it go right down. I'm going to top that up and we should have a perfect clutch. Well that was easy wasn't it? The clutch is perfect, absolutely perfect. Now, the point of this exercise was this. On your hydraulic cylinder at the top, your, your reservoir, as I was trying to say, when you set up these master cylinders correctly, the fluid has to run all the way down to the slave at the bottom. If it doesn't, and the only way you can do it is by jiggling and poking the, the pedal around, you've got your pedal set wrong. It's as simple as that. It's so, such an easy mistake to make. But you can see how easy it is to bleed it through. What is that? Two minutes? Not even that. It took me longer to find my brake fluid. Talking of which, a little while ago I had a chat with the JP about this because he does hydraulics and messing about and uh, stuff like that. And I said to him, why can't we use ATF? He says, because you can. He says, the only reason you use brake fluid is so you have just one sort of container. You couldn't use ATF in your brakes because it boils at a different temperature. But with the clutch, there's no, um, how do we say, there's no boiling point, there's no real friction involved. Like, you know, your brakes go around on your discs and that generates heat in your pads, which then transfers it to your calipers. Well, there's, there isn't anything like this. And also, ATF would be a better lubricant, because we were discussing how poorly the design of these cylinders are at an angle. Uh, and the way that it's operated, it's always going to scrape, the piston's always going to scrape. So um, that was that. So yeah, uh, yes, you could use ATF, but you've got to remember, don't put it in the brakes. Now I'm going to experiment on that next time I need to do my clutch uh, hydraulics. Uh, the good thing about hydraulic fluid, like the brake fluid, is it's hygroscopic. That means it pulls water and it pulls moisture into it. And the reason for that is so it doesn't boil. The last thing you want is moisture in your uh, fluid. And, that's why the caps are kind of special. You can see there's four little holes in the bottom, but they're offset so that there's, there should be a hole in the top somewhere of this cap so that the moisture is sort of prevented to get through. It's a cracker's idea, it never seems to work. But, um, on some vehicles like North American cars, Japanese cars, they put a diaphragm in here under the cap and that's a lot better idea because that as the fluid's going down the diaphragm will move down but keep uh, moisture from that fluid. There's different ways of doing it but this is like 1930s type of idea so we haven't really moved on much have you? Anyway so that's, a, that's just really how to do your clutch and if your brakes are all set up, you can do that exactly the same. Just let it all bleed through. There's very little need sometimes for doing fancy tools and stuff, but sometimes you do get cars that's a little bit naughty. See you later. <laughs>